Who are you? Too Short, the rapper. Short dog is in the house, you better listen to me. What can you tell the people, Too Short, about Rudy Ray Moore? He sold records out of the back of his car. It's a lot of inspiration in my career because he uh, had those characters um, in his movies, you know, Dolomite, those kind of characters. And he would really play along those lines of, uh, you know, playing the pimp kind of guy. And he would also rap and rhyme during every movie. And he would, uh, you know, have his have his hookers and stuff and his fly clothes and fancy cars and any do karate. And fight. It was just some low budget. You could call it crap if you want to, but it was, it was kind of like you know, it was a, it was ghetto cult flicks. Money in the ghetto ain't nothing new. It's been like that way before you was even born. Too short. Did you really invent biatch? <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> I really did. It was it was um something that we did back in high school, me and my rap partner and been synonymous throughout my whole career. And I'm, you know, actually extremely flattered that, you know, guys like Snoop Dogg and, you know, whoever else, Dave Chappelle, you know, they incorporated in their, you know, everyday careers and I'm you know, I'm flattered, man. It's like if I had to say my one contribution to hip hop, my most significant contribution to hip hop, it would have to be that word. Too short. What about the word "izzle"? Was the word "izzle" pioneered by the Gap Band? Now that's when you got me on because there's so many different. Uh, I guess you'd call them different little forms of pig Latin or whatever. But um, if it was on this album, it would have to be the first. Beat. Short. Is there a female equivalent to Too Short? Well, you know, uh, Little Kim has been around that neighborhood. I would say that if all her albums were just like hardcore, her first one, she would be Too Short. I'm the hottest on the planet. Who is Millie Jackson? She's a uh, she's a bitch. You know what I'm saying? She's like a self-proclaimed bitch. Like she's like I am that bitch, and she said it throughout her career. And she, you know, I was a I was a young boy listening to her music, and you know. She dropped the occasional lyrics. If she was now, if she was in my era, she might have even been dirtier than me. I don't know. I don't know. We don't know. She was a little bit premature in what she could do. You know what I'm saying? She probably wanted to be a Courtney Love or something, but she couldn't do it yet. So. Too short. Growing up, what were the similarities between you and Blowfly? Were you a young Blowfly? Well, yeah, you know, I like to think that where I lived at in Oakland, Blowfly was like major. I've, I've talked to other hip hop guys who said they weren't familiar with Blowfly when they were coming up, but this was must have in, in Oakland, California. You had to have each of the new Blowfly albums that came out, and I really would have to say, as a rapper, I've only been influenced by Melly Mel, who was the one who interjected the realism in rap when he came with the message he talked about real things before that it was just party raps nobody really really said real real stuff throughout a whole song I was inspired by Melly Mel I was extremely inspired by Spoonie G which most hip-hop fans don't know but actually we have a Spoonie G <laughs> for you to look at right here this is the G-ster here Spoonie well, I'm G glad, I'm glad you know because most hip-hop fans don't know about the man and he was like the first player on the mic he was the first guy who really dedicated his songs to this is pretty incredible isn't it love rap yeah, by I mean, Spoonie I mean, G he from really, the East Coast he was the first one who said I'm the ladies man and his lyrics were, were were strictly for you know the ladies and he said I'm a player I'm not like talking about my one lady I'm a player and you know and the other guy would be Blowfly who inspired me because when I listen to Blowfly and he has songs like rap dirty the incredible fuck and all these you know you know the word game these songs were like these songs are totally explicit I, to this day I've never made dirty songs as dirty as Blowfly. They freak you out. They freak too short out. I mean, he talks about anal and, you know, just, I mean, homosexual. He, he goes everywhere with it. And I kind of like, I'm, I'm like a sort of like a, you know, little, little, little bit cleaner than Blowfly. <laughs> too short? I've never, had, I've never had titties on a Too Short album cover either. That's an autographed Blowfly one too. Yeah, yeah. Did you notice he drew a dick through the heart there? <laughs> He's still out and rocking as well, too short. Blowfly is still around. 
Well, I never got to tell him, man, he was one of my heroes. So if you know him, pass it on. I will. I'll give you his number. No doubt, no doubt. Well, thanks so much, Too Short. Really appreciate the time. Anything else you want to add to the people out there at all? Why didn't you break out the Funkadelic record, man? You got one more. Oh, I got one more? Actually, it's not a Funkadelic. It's actually Shaft Man. Yet another X-rated comedy record. <laughs> yeah, i never seen this one. That's a good one. Yeah, anything else you'd like to add about any of the records that I brought out here at all? Yeah, you got me with, uh, which one was that? Blowfly. I didn't know you know that one. That was a good one there. That was a good one. And a Spoonie G. You... Yeah, oh, Spoonie G. That's strange, though, that you really like him because you haven't always liked East Coast rap. Didn't you sometimes diss East Coast rap for sampling too much James Brown? It wasn't personal. It was just like jabs, man. You know, like jabs. I really used to, you know, like before the West Side Connect put that whole, um, throw your W's up and West Side Smash, before they put that smash down, I was more or less like, not upset because I love the music that comes from the East Coast, but I was continuously throwing jabs, just saying, you know, like the only rappers. It's 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 not because of the rappers, it's because of the coverage, you know, the press coverage of rap, the rap industry, and you know, for a long time. I mean, it's still biased to this day, but for a long time, it was like the only rappers that existed were, you know, New York rappers in the in the little magazines and whatnot, and you could go platinum and couldn't get as much coverage as. You know, one guy who just had a hot single, and you know, what I'm saying so. That was that was back then. We don't we don't we know now. I was even even as they um, it was supposed to be, you know, like you said, a bad thing. But I was I used to live in a big house, swimming pool way back in the day, man. You know, what I'm saying so. I love these guys, man. This you were a millionaire from cassettes. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah, man. It's, it's called Pimpin' Incorporated. Keep on rocking in the free world and do 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 do.